Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. I'm kind of getting into this. I've been looking at this. And I like this. I didn't know I was going to like it. I was kind of like, I don't know if I'm going to like that or not. They kept talking about pallet wood and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I'm just not sure. But it looks, it looks really cool on 2v2. It looks... I'm, I'm digging it. I'm, I can't wait to see a finished product with the, all the stuff up there. Amen. We're, we're talking about the names of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And we, uh, I believe last week we got through the, um, you know, spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Um, talking about now this week the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Or the word fear there means reverence. Now, a reverential awe or an awe of a fear that is, is an awe of God. You know, we, we can't get cocky about our relationship with God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You know, some people get really cocky and, well, I'm, I'm a child of God and he's my buddy. And, you know, and, and you can get too far with that where you lose the respect for God. Amen. amen. When it's all said and done, he's still God. Yes. Amen. And, 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 and although we have a father-child relationship and he's our daddy, you know, at the same time, there's still, even in that relationship, there needs to be a place of you know, that he is, you know, that, that he's, he's the, uh, he's God, he's created the universe, he's our heavenly father, uh, we have a wonderful relationship with him, but there still needs to be that respect, we don't, look, we, we cannot allow ourselves to come to the place we disrespect or dishonor who God is, because we think we got this kind of cool thing going on. Even your children should not lose respect for their parents. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, um, let's look, again, Isaiah eleven twelve. You know, eleven two gives us the scripture on you know the, the, he is this, he is the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. It is his work. It is the work of the spirit to impart knowledge to us and birth in us a reverence for God. Everybody say a reverence for God. We need to have a reverence for God. I, I'll tell you that there's a lot of times I honestly believe that we miss certain things. Oh, about the, 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 the Spirit of God. Dad Hagen, uh, well, let me, uh, you've seen the book, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits. And, and, and that came in, um, right before camp meeting, 1987. Brother Hagen had a vision, was caught up in the presence of the Lord, you know, which would have been, which would have been his ninth vision. Remember, he said after the eight visions that they, weren't, they hadn't had any more. But then the Lord appeared to him and, and, and began to talk to him and right prior to camp meeting 1987. And, one of the, and, and, and y'all remember this. We used to give the Lord a hand clap. And we used to, you know, there's certain things we used to do. And, and the Lord, the Spirit to him says, uh, one of the first things he told him was clapping is neither praise nor worship. Clapping is neither praise nor worship. He said it is a, man, is a human form of uh, not even adoration, but but of, you know, to honor or, to, you know, to, to demonstrate a sign of respect in a human form. But in spiritual things, it's neither praise nor worship. And then, and then he, that camp meeting went on to talk in plans, purposes, and pursuits uh, about we've been substituting brass for gold in the church. Now, you look at brass, it shines like gold. It has, has a similar tone to it. Not necessarily, not exactly, but it's very similar. If you, if you catch, you know, finely polished brass, it has a similar tone as gold. And, uh, you know, you might think it's beautiful, but it's, it's not worth anything like gold is. I said it's not worth anything like gold is. You know, gold, gold is highly, highly, highly valuable. And, and we get into the things, you know, we begin to get uh, whatever. We'll, we'll start substituting brass for gold. We'll get, we'll get whatever. We'll get kind of cocky about things. And we'll, we'll miss out on what God has for us. You know, we're to honor the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you what. You can say all you want to say. You can say, well, I'm going to tell you if the Lord just said, if I just go up and talk to him, put more. I can't find that in the Bible anywhere. They all fell down at his feet. I don't care when it was. They fell down at his feet. Are you here? 
There was, there was no cockiness about it. I'm going to tell you right now in heaven, the four beasts and the four and 20 elders, about every 15 minutes or so, I don't, I'm just kind of guessing the time for it. But every once in a while, they're just, they're sitting there on their thrones and they're all, you know, they, they have some type of authority. They've got thrones. They'll just hop up, fall down the face, throw the crowns at his feet and say, worthy is the lamb that was slain. Glory to God. I don't think there is an arrogance anywhere in spirit. I'm going to tell you, if Jesus walked in here right now, you would not go, hey, let's look at the Lord, man, dude, look at that. You'd be overtaken by his presence. I said, you'd be overtaken by his presence. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. How glorious is the presence of the Lord. How matchless and marvelous is the presence of the Lord. To enter into his presence and to enter into the, to, to, the, to the majesty of the Lord, we must come with a reverence and an awe. We must come with a recognition of the gloriousness of his presence and respect and honor. And we'll see manifest demonstrations of his glory because of it hallelujah and um and in the uh, this isn't my sermon I'm, I'm just gonna i'm following the holy ghost right now you just kind of have to go with the spirit and and and, and this is 1987 but i remember when i went to my first camp meeting in 1980 now, now going to classical pentecostal we man you just didn't mess with the the things of god if the spirit of god was a manifestation you didn't act up Grandma would thump you upside the head. You, you'd be laying out, you'd be laid out between the eyes and one because you were slain the spirit. She knocked you out for disrespecting the Holy Ghost. You just didn't put up with it. They didn't put up with it. But I remember I went to my first camp meeting in 1980. And um, there was a move of the spirit taking place. And people began to clap. And I was so grieved. I thought, this is, the pro this is not the proper place for this. Clapping is fine under certain things, or, you know, if somebody says something you really enjoy, you clap and say, oh, that was good. You know, but, but this wasn't the place. The Holy Spirit, the heavenly dove, had come and had manifest, and he'd come to bring the glory, to heal the sick, to minister to people. And, and, and I, uh, I remember I turned to one of my roommates. I said, that's just not right. They, I got rebuked up one side and down the other. They can clap if they want to. I mean, he went all off on me. And I just never said anything else. I thought, well, I'm young in the Lord. I just must not know what I'm talking about. And well, seven years later, Dad wrote the book or came out with the, the message, and, and uh, uh, the, the tapes became a book. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even release the tapes. One of the leading magazines in America called him a false prophet after that camp meeting, Christian Magazines. Because he had said, because it messed with their worship stuff. Talked about, you know, some of the things we're doing in worship weren't worship. They were, they were carnal. You know, more, more about uh, entertainment than they were ministry. I understand this. There's a place for a lot. There's a lot of places for things in the right setting are okay. But we, we can't, you, know, you label it one thing and it's something else. It's, it, it doesn't work. When we get more, and we, I tell you, we, we, if, we take, if we take worship out and make it the main, you know, you've got some churches that's more important, worship's more important than the preaching of the word. We need, wor wor what does worship do? It sets the atmosphere. It sets the atmosphere for the spirit of God to minister and to manifest. Worship is so important. It is so important, but it needs to have the right spirit behind it. I'm not rebuking our church or anything. I'm just saying, I'm talking in general terms from this era when things were going. There were things going on, and it got to be where people were entertaining. And everybody was more interested in the entertainment than they were in the, in the, in, in the Word of God. You know, they didn't want to preach. They just wanted to sit there and, and sing, sing the song and, you know, dance and run and shout and holler every service. You know, and thank God for that. But I'll tell you what, you, you, you see Jesus ministering. Whether they had worship services. So worship had lost its rightful place. And the Lord was rebuking and trying to bring correction and uh, get it back to where it needed to be. It needed to come back to being uh, uh, where, where people were, were brought into the presence of God. And then the word of God delivered to them and ministered to them. And they, they were received from heaven. And so that whole camp meeting was about plans and purposes and pursuits. You know? See, if you, you keep the right attitude toward God, you get a right spirit about toward God. You stay in awe of God. 
I think, I'll be honest with you, I don't believe you can have the awe of God and bring all the sin into the church the church has had brought in. I don't believe you can have the reverential awe of God and be running around with somebody else's wife in the church. I just don't believe it. You don't fear God. Or even thinking about it. You cannot have a fear of God. And listen, let me say this. We should have a, a, a holy fear of, of, of displeasing God. And people say, well, we shouldn't teach fear to people. Well, the Bible say, do, does. Yeah, the, the Spirit of the Word of God says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What's that mean? You walk it out, but you walk it out in reverence. You don't go around and get all cocky about it. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah, that's it, pal, in Christ. If it weren't for Jesus, you wouldn't be righteous. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah, my boldness is based on the fact that Jesus is there as my, is my, inter, is my mediator, as my intercessor, as my advocate. I can't come in my own ability. I have to come in his. And so the, the spirit of the, of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We're to have an awe. Now, we're not afraid of God like we're afraid of a rattlesnake, but you should be, you should be in awe of his presence. I'll tell you one thing, when I get to heaven, I'm going to march right up to the Lord, and I'm going to ask him why such and such happened. Hogwash. I said hogwash. Brother Higgins, you say Tommy Rot. Or how about baloney? Hallelujah. If we have the awe of God, our, our churches have gotten to be playgrounds of with, playing with spiritual things instead of standing in awe of them. We want to tell people it's okay to sin, it's okay to drink, and it's okay to do this, and you still get to go to heaven. Oh, well, okay, so you get to go to heaven. And you make a mess of everything down here while you're getting there. We're supposed to be walking with God. We're supposed to be honoring God. We're supposed to be pleasing God. We're supposed to be vessels that carry. Did you know the Bible calls you stewards of the mysteries of God? When are we going to walk like it? The Holy Spirit can be grieved and grieved easily. And he calls us aside to stand in awe of the presence of the Most High. So what you think you know and what you think you got and what you think you're going to do, I'm just going to tell you, you ain't going to do it. As I said, if Jesus appeared right now in the midst of us, you wouldn't be going, uh, get, acting real cool, you know, like you're at some, you know, uh, parade, a rock concert. You'd be on your face. You'd cry holy. Listen, in the Bible, angels showed up and they fell down. And they'd say, you know, I'm, I, I'm an angel. And I'm not, you know, don't, don't do that. Don't, you don't worship me. You don't worship the angels. But they would fall at the feet of Jesus. And if they didn't fall, he'd knock them off the horse. Ask Paul. <laughs> oh, can't go one further? If you had fear of God, you wouldn't gossip in the church. Amen. If you feared God, that went over real big. You would be running down, sister so-and-so. Hello? You wouldn't go home in your private closet and then gossip about this or gossip about that. Get on the phone with, with whoever and gossip. If you feared God, you think you can take that stuff and go do that at home and walk back in here with it and get away with it? And he, he's going to be here and manifest himself and do all kinds of wonderful things for you? We have, I'm so far off where I was going to, uh, we have two incidences in the, in the Old Testament, but really clear incidences of, of the, the manifest presence of God working in two different uh, mindsets of people. Now, Moses got kind of cocky. We all know that. He's out there, you know, tending to Jethro's sheep. He looks up and sees the burning bush. He says, I'm going to turn aside and see this, this thing. 
he goes, they're all cocky. I mean, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Moses, man. I mean, I've killed, uh, uh, killed Egyptians, and I've made it across the desert, and I've got, got Jethro's herds, and I'm, I'm just, I, I got it going on, man. Gets up there, sees it, and the voice begins to speak to him. says, Moses, Moses. And his answer is this, here am I. And the voice says, take off your shoes, for the place you stand is holy ground. And then God begins to speak to him. And begins to tell him he's, going, he's called him to go deliver his people. And you know what Moses' response was after about three minutes in the presence of God? Who am I? I said, he said, who am I? God's glory took the pride out of him, took the starch out of his shirt. Amen? Humbled him. And, he, and then he had to get somebody else to go. And then, they even had to raise up somebody else to talk for him. Because he stuttered, he had speech impediment. So Aaron had to go do all the talking. So he gets up there, but when he got into the presence of God, he went from here am I to who am I. And then we have, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above the throne flew seraphims, each having six wings. Two, they covered their face, two, they covered their feet, and twenty, they did fly. And they cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then said, I am, I, I am undone from a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And one of the angels flew, and uh, seraphim flew, and took a coal, took tongs, took a coal off the fire, and came and touched my lips and cleansed my iniquity. And the Lord said, who shall we send? Who will go for us? Now, wait a second. Now, he started out, I'm undone. And after he was cleansed by the presence of God, the Lord said, who shall we send? And he said, here am I, send me. You see, the presence of God will humble you, it will break you down, and then it will raise you back up in service, ability for God. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you what, when you come, you won't lead the way you came. You won't stay the same. And it will be, you will have had a transformation from either the arrogance or the weakness of your flesh into the usefulness of God by his spirit. Amen. I said amen. But I can tell you, Moses feared the Lord and, and Isaiah feared the Lord. Even coming out of either one of those places, they both came out in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the church has to once again regain its awe and reverence and fear of the Lord so that we, don't, that we do not disrespect or dishonor or grieve him. Trying to be cool and hip. You know? It don't matter what we do in church. We can do whatever we want to do because we're, you know, we're, we're free to do whatever we want to do. That's not the point. Are you displeasing God by doing it? And just, can, I, can I define liberty for you? You know, he said, I'm free in the Lord. I got liberty in the Lord. The word liberty, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free, has nothing to do with you doing anything you want to do. That liberty is you've been freed from the law of sin and death. You've been freed from the dominion of sin. You've been freed from the kingdom of darkness. You've been freed from the dominion of Satan. You are liberated from that, and now you are free not to do anything you want to do. You are free to live under the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. You're free to live according to God's plan and God's purposes. You're free to serve God. You're free to live in that whole new plane altogether. You are not free to go out and get drunk. Shoot up and smoke some weed. That's not what you're free to do. You're free from Satan's dominion and you are liberated to serve God. Whereas time passed, you couldn't do it, now you're liberated to do it. And I just, I, I honestly believe if we would get back to having a reverential fear of the things of God and of God Himself, we would see more manifestations of God because we'd have less, we'd have less junk going on that would be an inhibitor to God. Let me say something here. How many know there's electricity in those outlets over there? You know, you can get so cocky about the fact that you can handle that electricity, you can get yourself hurt. Oh, yeah. Now, the Lord's Spirit, now, I love to tell the Daryl and Daryl joke. It's not even a joke, it's a real event. Um, we, had somebody, uh, we had somebody in the church, we were doing some electricity, and we had, a, we had a, in the other building, there was another panel box over there. We had a, we had a breaker that, that was doing something funny, and we couldn't figure out which one it was. It would go in and out. You flip them, and it worked. Then it would flip out and whatever. And so I was going to do, I was going to do one of the dumbest things I've ever done. 
I took, I took a piece of, of number 12, uh, or 12 or 10 solid wire, not thread, not braided, but solid wire, skinned off the ends. And I was going to go down the breakers on each side and bypass the breaker and find out which one was bad. Well, yeah, I could have got away with it because if I, if I had gone from the one side to the other side, it just would have bypassed that and, you know, we would have found it. But see, when you're doing something, you get cocky, you think you know what you're doing, and you, you lose your respect for electricity. I reached in there and put it on one side and then t reached up, and for some reason, I just kind of blanked out and went on the same side on another breaker. I cross-phased it. And it went, Pow! It smoked. I had like a little smoke on my face and on my hands. I, did, I, didn't, get, I didn't get electrocuted. And then the, the guy behind me, it about blew him out the way. He was about to run out of the building. <laughs> now, here's the funny thing. It fixed the breaker. <laughs> <laughs> That's called mercy. <laughs> but my, I, see, I'd messed around with a little electricity here and there and done things, you know. And, and you, know, you, you know, you're supposed to turn the breaker off before you mess with stuff. Yeah. Why? Because you might do something stupid. And if the breaker's off, you don't get electrocuted. You know, I mean, you know, you know we'll, I'll do it. I'll, you know, go in there and open up a, a, a junction box and reach in there and be real careful not to touch anything and, and do it hot. We're not supposed to do it hot. There's a reason you're not supposed to do it hot. But just a pain to walk all the way over to the breaker box, turn off the panel box, find the right one, turn it off, go back and fix it, go back and turn it back on, see if it's working right, go back and turn it back off, all that kind of stuff. What is all that? What am I saying? You lose respect for it. And out of losing respect for it, it can, it can light, light up your life. And I lost respect for it. I, I, I gained a healthy respect that day. Because I realized I could have killed myself. And, and, and Alan with me. Because he was, he was kind of leaning over my shoulder watching. You know? So we came out and he said, hello, my, name, my name's Larry. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. Daryl and Daryl Electric Company. It's the old, the old Bob Newhart show. Some of y'all remember Daryl and Daryl and Larry, they were, they were, they weren't, their elevator didn't make it to the top floor. Okay? Three brick, bricks full of a short load, two french fries short of a happy meal, you know all that. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> two french fries short of a happy meal, you had heard that before? Okay, all right. You're just thinking of that whole event. Yeah. <laughs> so we, every once in a while, what we, what we'll still talk about Daryl and Daryl Electric Company. They're out of business now. Yeah. The lack of respect for that electricity can get you hurt. Yet, respecting it and tapping into it with respect makes it a blessing. We're enjoying the blessing of it right now. We have lighting in here. We got some really cool lighting soon. Little, little LED cans that shoot up that are, do all kinds of cool stuff, change colors, you know, chase the... I don't know if they're going to chase my sermons or not. That might be too distracting. You can set up the chase, you can set up the flicker, you can set them up to change colors, all kinds of stuff. You know, the, the electricity is a blessing, but you've got to handle it right. You've got to respect it. And I believe that what the church has done in many cases is we've lost our respect for God, and we play with God. We take the things of God lightly. We, don't, we, we, we think that we can handle and we can control God. You can't control God. You can't control God. Now, God may not do things because you you're not operating right, but you're not controlling him. He may, he, he, he's basically, if you're violating his principles, he may not manifest or do things. It has nothing to do with you controlling him. You have to respect and awe him. And so when the Spirit of God comes into manifestation... He is also the spirit of knowledge, but he's also the spirit of the fear of the Lord. When he's in demonstration and manifestation, we need to awe him. Yeah. We need to respect him. One of the things, see, this is the year of manifestation, demonstration, or demonstration, visitation, manif demonstration, and manifestation. Visitation. Demonstration and manifestation of the Holy Spirit. We're believing God for that. I believe when we get there, by the time Shekinah glory gets here, there's going to be some things loosed. Amen. But you see, a lot of times we get, we get caught up with what the Spirit of God's doing 
And we'll do things like clap or get, get all excited or whatever else and dissipate the manifestation with a human response, with a, with a fleshly or carnal response. What we should do is just, just get, in, get into that place of offering. Let him work and not draw out the, what the manifestation of the presence of the Lord is there to do with a, with a, a carnal response. It's okay. now listen, I understand God touches our emotions, and I don't want to get to where we go. But somebody, you know, what if we, somebody comes in line, we got eight people up here, and somebody comes up here, and, and somebody lays hands on them, and instantly they're healed, and we all start, yeah, woo, glory to God, hallelujah. Glory. And there's eight other people still up here. They need ministry too. We don't need to dissipate the presence of the anointing, you know, when, when he still needs to minister to other people. We don't want to grieve him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. you know, we need to, that, that's a good time to start worshiping. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're so good. Look how you've ministered to our brother or our sister. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Oh, we just, we honor you for, for the work you're doing in our midst. Oh, we praise your holy name. We stand in awe. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all bless. I forget how it goes, but we need to stand in awe. I get going sometimes and forget words. I'm not a worship leader. I make a glad racket. Some folks make a joyful sound. I make a glad racket. Hallelujah. That's why I usually do my stuff at home because you don't want to hear it. I told one of the people leading up worship every Wednesday night on Thursday night. I said, you might want to move over there. I'll get you off pitch. I'll just mess you up. I have had them tell me from the platform, Pastor, you get me off pitch on the platform. I, Hallelujah. I praise you, Jesus. I mean, you know, just... Could you, could you aim the other direction? To get to it? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I try. But oh, my God. Reverencing God. Respecting his manifest presence. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's so wonderful. You know, but you know, he's, a, he's a spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. I, I kind of got over there. Let's, let's see if we can go uh, back over here into Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. It's on the, this is on the... Uh, the fear of the Lord, are you here? Are you ready for this? Is the beginning of knowledge. Where does knowledge begin? I believe the proverb, the writer of this proverb is trying to tell us that if we lose that respect for God, the knowledge we'll get will get skewed. It'll become twisted because we're no longer in fear of the one that's bringing the knowledge to us. We're no longer reverencing. We're no longer in awe of the one coming to us with the knowledge. We, 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 get, we get flippant about it. It's, it's, it's that loss of respect. Now, now, now Nathan's over at Greensboro College. He's in the music department. They got musicians in there that think they know more than the, band, the, the, the jazz band guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, and they think, I know this. And, I know. and of course, Nathan's like, why don't you just shut up? He knows what he's doing. Now, now, now their, their band director has been teaching band for over 30 years. Y'all ever heard of the Four Tops? Drifters? Temptations? He's a stock musician. When they're on the East Coast, he travels and plays with them. He knows a little bit about what he's talking about. He plays trumpet. He plays a really hot trumpet. I mean, he's, he's a good trumpeter. When you say so, Dick, Dick's heard him. I mean, he, he plays a nice trumpet. He knows what he's talking about. Now, he won't put up with you. See those people who lose respect? What happens? They stop learning. They lose their learning edge because they think they know more than him. Oh, because you, so you got one run down and you figured out that somebody else doesn't know. Woo! Oh, whatever. This, you know, he, he demands perfection. He, he won't let... The, he, guys, you hit the note, but you didn't hit it with the right... Mm, whatever, you know, you had to, had, to, had to do whatever with it to make it right, right. I mean, it was right, but it wasn't right, right. You know what I'm saying? It was technically right, but it didn't have the feel to it. And I want you to hit the note and play it technically right, but I want you to do it with the feel, the emotion that that, that part of the song demands. So... And, and you know, the people who are listening and learning are, you know, like Joe, our, our trump, now Joe plays for a church. They're paying him to come play the sax. We can't do that. So he's going up to, he's going to the church, paying him to come play the sax, like $100 a Sunday. Yeah. Well, you're in school. You got to go, you know. 
you know. But Joe's come over and played sax for us on some worship services and stuff. You, Joe's way better than he was last year, the year two years ago. Because he, he listens. Him and they sit around and talk about the people. You know, and not the bad, there's people who don't listen. They say they don't listen. If we, they listen, they grow. And they're, they're, they've made a commitment to listen and to grow. They keep, they keep the respect for their band teacher because he knows what he's talking about. I said he knows what he's talking about. And see, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Understand this. God knows more than you. And if you don't think so, you're in big trouble. I was at a mission conference a number of years ago. It was actually the first one. It was one of the summer mission conference. First one he had uh, back at night, late 19, early 1980s. And there was a missionary and his wife there. They had, they had and went well known and I, and I, tremendous respect for him. Uh, the, the, uh, but uh, they were there and they were sitting down there having a kind of, they kind of were having a, a sit down panel thing where they were at, all these ministers were getting asked them questions. Well, yeah, this, this minister had been on, on the mission field for 30 plus years. Had, he, he was doing the crusades of 50,000 and stuff before you ever heard of Reinhard Monkey. I mean, he was going back years ago when it was unheard of to have meetings that big. Mass healings in India where they would just stack up the stuff and he would pray for the mass crowds and they'd get healed. He, challenged their, he would challenge the Muslims and say, pray for this person in the name of Muhammad. And nothing would happen. He'd pray for the name of Jesus and they'd get instantly healed. And have a revival right there. The Muslims were just, they couldn't do anything. Pray for my name of Muhammad. Go ahead. Nothing. Like the prophets of Baal. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, in the name of Jesus, I, and instantly they were made whole. I mean, notable. Like one person was Bobak. Like whether it was, you ever see Bobak people? Well, the, the, this case they had there, one, one of the cases they had was they, they walked on their hands because they were bowed backwards so far. They, had to, they, they walked with their hands and their feet. They got prayed for and they got healed in front of the whole crowd. Well, this couple, they were there, and they were, they were up on the platform ministering and talking, and all of a sudden, they got talking about, you know, uh, getting wisdom from God or ideas from God, and, 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 and the wife goes, I give God ideas. And the husband looked at her and said, you give God ideas? She said, yeah, and he likes my ideas. Now, it was about 30 seconds later. Now, Brother Summerall, if you knew anything about Brother Summerall, a bull in the china shop is a kind, gentle description. Okay, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, you could take it in reverse out of his car because he didn't back up for anything. He wouldn't park at a parking space unless he could drive into it so he could drive out because he didn't back up. I mean, he was serious. And next thing he's running, he, he comes from wherever he's sitting. I, I don't know where he was in the building, but it didn't take him long to get up there. He walks up on the platform right in the middle of the question and answer session, puts his hands on the, on the shoulder of the husband and wife, pulls them apart, sticks his head down to the microphone and goes, they just got off the plane. They're tired. They're going to the hotel. We'll see you tonight. Now, I know someone very, very, well, what, what, this brother's gone home too, but I knew someone very, very well who was there, who, who knows, and said this. He said, you don't know how close she came to getting rebuked and filleted in front of the whole church. But out of respect for the husband, he didn't do it. He was getting ready to take her to the cleaners. You give God ideas, and he likes your ideas? You think you've thought of something that God hadn't thought of? Are you kidding me? Are you stinking kidding me? Or, I mean, whatever else, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, I, I could do Valley Girl, but I forgot how, I, I don't want to keep my neck. <laughs> you give God, see, that loss of respect, you think you've gotten so cool and you've gotten so far down the road. Now, you're going to tell God, you'll give God ideas. Now, I understand scriptures like come let us reason together, but God's letting you reason that out. It ain't that you gave him an idea that he didn't think of first. Now, come reason together means come argue your case with me. And you may argue, you're going to offer your position, I'm going to offer my position, but, you know, uh, in the end, it's going to have to be the will of God. You don't give God ideas. See, that kind of thing is the thing that creeps into the church and we get cocky and we lose respect for him. But see, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. So here we have it. 
Fearing God is the beginning place of knowledge. We must maintain our reverence for him, our honor for him, our right relationship towards him. Why? Knowledge begins there. We know that when we fear the Lord, he knows when we fear him. We won't misapply the knowledge he gives us. We won't mistreat it. We'll honor it from where it came from. Could somebody say amen? amen? And so we have to, oh, we have to come back to that place. Like I've, I've, I've been in a lot. I've been around a lot. I grew up classical Pentecostal. I've been in the charismatic move. I've been in the, the word of faith. I've been over into the, you know, um, uh, the, the, some of the new things that people, try to come, that people come up with. But let me say something. And one thing I've noticed is that when people get into the place of worship and reverencing all in God is when his strongest manifestations are. Now, listen, there's, you know, if the manifestation of the Spirit of God is laughter, then, then that's the right, thing, right response. But you just can't go and have a laughing service because you think it's cool. Amen. Now, I was at a meeting a number of years ago in, in Tulsa. And uh, one night, we had, it was a, and this, that, that was the manifestation of the Spirit. It was, it was laughter. There was joy. There was, you know. And the next night, Sister, whatever her name was over here on the, the side of the auditorium, I mean, she sounded like the Wicked Witch of the West. She's going to get it going. The man of God on the platform can't get it going, so she's going to get it going. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Wicked Witch of the West. And Dad was going to go over, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And he sat there for a couple of minutes. And finally, he said, Brother David, talking about David Ingalls. Now, you've probably heard some of his songs, I'm the Seed of Abraham. You know, that's, that's David Ingalls' song. That's, that's probably one of the most re quickly recognizable. The word is working mightily in me, Mark 11, 23, 24. You know, I am healed, I am whole. From the top of my head, to, you know, to the soul tips of my toes. First Peter 2, you know, 24 says we were. If we were, we then, then I am. Those are all David Ingalls' songs. That's real good stuff. He said, David, come up and sing something. He goes there and plays at the piano. Sits there for a couple of minutes. And, of course, you know, She's like, <laughs> God, shut up. See, if you're spiritual, right, you, God, you, you know that's not right. And he just started going, there's a whole lot of people going home. By the signs of time, it won't be long. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be gone. There's a whole a lot of people going home. And he began to sing the verse. And in five minutes, the entire building was on their knees. Nobody asked them to get on their knees. Nobody asked them to get on their knees on their face. I mean, people crammed down between those pews. And, and everybody, I kind of looked up. Everybody was on their knees. Nobody asked them to get on their knees. They just recognized the move of the Spirit was not laughter and running and whatever. It was awe. And we're going home one day. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the moment, the twinkling of an eye, the, the, with the voice of the archangel, trump of, the trumpet shall sound, and the Lord shall depend, descend. Hallelujah. And we which are alive remain shall be changed in the moment, the twinkling of an eye, and those which are asleep shall be caught up, and there we meet the Lord together in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Lord's coming back. We're going home, glory to God. There was just such an awe in the building. It got peaceful. He got quiet. And then dad taught a, a short Bible lesson and we went home. When we recognize what God's doing, we recognize the spirit, when we recognize how the spirit's moving. It's not, let me say, it's not a Holy Ghost service just because you ran. Now we like those because it's easier to kind of yield to that with your flesh, running and jumping over the chairs and hanging from the ceiling. I, I, I'll do it all. Done it all. Okay, kind of run through a troop and leap over a wall. Hallelujah, I've done it all. Roll under the pews. All right, been, been involved in every, you name it, I've been involved in it. 
I have not rolled out the front doors into the parking lot. I have, so I have not been involved in that. If that's what you say about us as Pentecostals, you know, they, they, they roll out the front doors into the parking lot. You know, well, praise the Lord. They hadn't had an opportunity yet. But it's just as much a Holy Ghost service if the anointing is to teach the Word. It's just as much a Holy Ghost service if the anointing is to worship with peace and quietness. If it's the direction of the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, whatever he, how he manifests himself, if it's his direction for that service, it's a Holy Ghost service. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Can you shout glory? glory. Hallelujah. And so um, the, the margin for this says that the uh, beginning of knowledge is uh, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. That word beginning actually means principal part. It's the principal part of knowledge. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just, oh, thank you, Jesus. We honor you. We magnify you. We, 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 we recognize the working of the Spirit in our midst. We reverence our God. We commit to be reverential in awe of him and his presence and acknowledging the workings of God in our midst so that we do not grieve, we do not hinder. We honor and bless in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address P.O. Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving